Hey, what's up? My name is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Notion itself to get your data in there, to style it how you might want to, and then to actually create an integration so that you can use it in a Netlify serverless function. So I've got here just a Notion database with nothing going on so far, and we need to do a few things. First of all, let's go ahead and create some data. So I can come over here and add a page, and let's call this uh, articles to uh, display or something like that. All right, whatever you want to call it, it's fine. And then I'm going to actually create a board here. I've seen, uh, at least in the clients that I've used this for, that they kind of like being able to drag it through the process, especially if there's several people who might need to review it. So what I'm going to do is just rename each of these. You don't have to view it this way if you prefer to view your data a different way. Obviously, this is just a view. And uh, right now, at least, the Notion API doesn't support different views, so it doesn't really matter how you view it. All the data is going to come out the same. So I'm going to come in here. Let's call this um, needs review. And then over here, I'm going to call this uh, ready to publish. Of course, you can delete some of these if you don't want them. And then I'll come all the way over here. And under completed, I'm going to say uh, live, just so they realize that anything in that column is going to be live on their site. Now let's go ahead and delete some of these cards. Uh, and what I typically like to do is I like to create a sample like template card so that if they ever want to refer back to kind of how I structured the data that they've got something to work with. So I'm going to say template. And if I open this up, these are the different properties that are associated with this data. All right, so now it automatically has an assignee and then a status, which right now is on empty. But if I were to click here, you can see this shows me my other columns and that's basically all it's saying. So I definitely want to keep that around. However, I do want to change some of these other things. Now I'm going to use the actual template for the title of the card. You may not want to do that. You can do it a different way if you want, but that's just how I have it set up. What I will do is add a couple other things. So the first thing I'm going to have is I'm just going to call it image like that. And it'll be the card image itself. And the property type I want it to be is actually going to be files and media. All right, next, uh, I do want, uh, let's see, I've already got my heading. I've got my content now. So I'm just going to call this content and it can stay just like that. Uh, text is fine. All right, next, I am going to want my card button. So this is the actual text of the button. So let's call it uh, btn underscore text. And here again, it can just be text. That's fine. And then finally, I'm going to have a link itself. So I'll call it link. And then under here, I'm just going to say, oops, hide when empty. Not that. All right. I'm going to call it uh, URL. And then let's rename this. Let's see. Hide property, always show. And let's call this link once again. Okay. So that's the basic stuff I want. Now, I actually don't want this thing here. So let's just go ahead and delete this property. Uh, if you want to change how this shows up in your actual table, so right now only the title shows up, uh, you can come, let's see, where is it? Over here, properties, and decide which things are toggled on. So for instance, if you want the button text to always show or the content, it's going to be hard to see anything without something here. So let's change this. Um, let's add some content here, some button text here, just so you can see what this looks like. So I'll come back over this way, uh, properties, and then turn the content on. Oh, you can already see it there. Uh, or the button text, you can see that those show up. So you can actually have them showing in the card if the user wants that. Then all they'll do is they'll come in here and they just duplicate this, and then they drag it over to needs review once it's ready. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and update the, the data in each of these according to kind of the fake data we set over here. So for instance, I'm gonna grab my image. This is the only one that's a little tricky, so I'll show you that here. Uh, so the copy of template, this would be like uh, lorem ipsum, whatever. And then for the image, I'm going to click in here. And rather than uploading something, I want to embed the link. So if they can duplicate it and embed the link, the rest of it's pretty easy to figure out. Then I can come in here and have like uh, lorem whatever. That's kind of long. Let's maybe <laughs> cut that back a bit. I just have a little shorthand to do that. Um, and then button text could be like, check it out. And then the link can be whatever. In this case, I'm just going to do a pound sign. Um, but this is what they would do. And then they would just drag it from needs review to ready to publish to eventually live. So I'm going to go ahead and add a bunch more data. It's the same exact thing that I just showed you, but you don't need to see all that. So I'll do that after this video is done. And that's what we'll start with in the next video. Now that you've got your data set, it's time to actually build an integration that you can use with the Notion API. So if I come up here, I've got the developer docs and I've got this linked in the description. And what we're going to want to do is head over to my integrations. If I click on this, I can then click Create a New Integration. And this is basically going to give me access uh, to my database with the Notion API. Then let's give it a name. So let's call it Notion CMS. 
You can upload an image if you want, and then you need to pick an associated workspace. Now, in my case, I've got two here, so I'm going to pick the article database. That's the one that I'm using, and then I'll hit submit. All right, and then it's going to give you a internal token here that you're going to want to make sure you uh, capture in a little bit in a future video. So we'll leave this open and grab it in a future video. You can rename it if you want to. Again, add a logo. You can choose if you want it to be internal or public. In our case, we just want it to be internal because we're the only ones who need access to it with the API. If I save it and come back over this way and refresh, uh, then I can come over here and click the share button and I need to actually share this integration with this uh, database, with this page. So if I come in here and click, which is a little confusing, you actually have to click inside there. Or I think maybe you can click the invite button too. Then your integration should show. If it doesn't show, just make sure that you've got, uh, you gave access to the right uh, workspace. If you had a different workspace or something like that. I'll go ahead and click this and then just click invite. And now it should have access to actually edit and view and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so we've got everything set up now with Notion to where we should be able to pull this stuff in in Netlify. But in order to pull it in with a Netlify function, we have to actually get the website up and running on Netlify, which is super simple to do. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do in the next video. All right, thanks so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Happy coding.